After Goku defeated Omega Shinron, he and the Eternal Dragon departed from Earth, and this was the last time the Z Fighters would see Goku. Once he was gone, much like after the Cell Games, peace was restored at last. Goku Jr. is a very interesting character, but outside of the final scene in GT at the 64th World Tournament and the Legacy of Goku movie, we haven't seen anything of him and don't really know anything about him outside of the fact that he's a direct descendant of Pan and he looks exactly like his ancestor Goku. Dragon Ball Centuries is a story that takes place 100 years after Goku leaves Earth, after the Legacy of Goku movie. We start by seeing Goku Jr. and Pan praying at Goku's gravesite. Thanks to his ancestors' sacrifices, Goku Jr. has been living a pretty normal life as he lives in Hercule City and goes to high school just like a regular kid. Much like Goku, he isn't really too good with the ladies purposely, but he doesn't have to be as we see here. Surprisingly, however, Goku Jr. seems to get his demeanor and personality from Gohan, as he acts quite shy. Even so, after his impressive showing at the 64th World Martial Arts Tournament against Vegeta Jr., he's actually quite popular. One day while in class, Goku Jr. senses multiple large power levels headed straight to Earth, which it's extremely alarming to him because the most powerful person he had ever faced up to this point was Vegeta Jr. Three hours later, a massive ship lands on Earth. The only warriors left from Goku's time are Master Roshi, Mr. Popo, and Dende, who all sense this strange energy that just arrived on Earth. As the door from the spaceship rises, out walks a Saiyan. His name is Raputo and he came to Earth in search of the Dragon Balls, which is quite strange because it's been over 100 years since the Dragon Balls have been used since Goku left with the Eternal Dragon. Goku Jr. and Pan are in possession of the 4 star ball and this brings Raputo straight to Goku Jr.'s house. He barges in the door with his soldiers and says that he only has two things that he needs to say to Pan. The first is that he's taking the 4 star Dragon Ball with him now and the second is that he wants to kill her. Without any hesitation or compassion, Raputo murders Pan in cold blood and takes the Dragon Ball. Goku Jr. senses something isn't right almost immediately. He's out on a date with the girl that asked him to the movies previously, but as soon as he feels Pan's energy disappear, he hops on the Nimbus Cloud and goes home at once. When Goku Jr. gets home, the first thing he sees is Pan, on the ground lifeless and covered in blood. Before he can mourn though, he gets approached by the same guys who just broke into his house. This is actually a fairly easy fight for Goku Jr. until Rapido shows up and knocks him out with an energy blast to the back. It's unknown why Rapido chose not to kill Goku Jr. here, but when he wakes up, Hercule City has been completely destroyed. After having his home destroyed and losing his last living family member, this experience matures Goku Jr. From this moment forth, he's dedicated to finding the Dragon Balls to wish Pan back and this is the start of his adventure where he will go on to live a life similar to Goku's. He wears a similar gi, uses the Nimbus, and even apparently has a power pole of his own, so I say he's following in his great great grandpa steps pretty well. Eventually Goku Jr. does go on to obtain the Super Saiyan transformation, but that's a little bit later on in the story. Let me know if you guys did like this story though, this is just the beginning of Dragon Ball Centuries taking place 100 years after Goku, so if you guys are feeling Goku Jr. and want to hear more, let me know down below as always. Have a great day guys and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.